This is the Milo Beasley Show. This is the Milo Beasley Show. There's only one thing you need to know. This is the Milo Beasley Show. And now, here's your host, Milo Beasley. And welcome to the Milo Beasley Show. Do -do 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 -do. Today, my guest is a man who I have been lucky enough to meet in person. And now I get to bring him on the show. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited and I hope you guys are as well. So please help me welcome at this time, the boy wonder himself, Bert Ward. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine, citizen. Oh man, I'm I'm so glad to have you. Yeah, so if you can see here, uh, oh yes, th there's my photo. Yes, uh, so Adam West. Yes, so I believe it was in Tampa in Tampa in 2015. Right. I was uh, lucky enough to to meet you and and uh, Mr. West, and it was a a great time. I believe it was Fanboy Expo. A, a great great time. I remember that. I mean, you know, actually, it, it's hard to remember because I've done more than 7,000 personal appearances and signed more than eight and a half million autographs in a lot of years. So it's uh, sometimes you get the states and, the, <laughs> you know, mixed up a little bit. For the most part, though, I, I do have good memory of, of the, you know, but it can't remember everybody because you right. literally the lines. I mean, sometimes were five and six hours long and poor people that were standing in line with their kids especially with the little kids by the time they got up to the front of the line the little kids were already asleep in their arms so uh, right but for the most part it worked out really well batman of course as you know was incredibly successful uh do you st are you still doing touring conventions are you still doing that at all well uh, i actually stopped a little while ago and then of course with the covid thing that sure right. put a chill on things didn't it um sure did. but now i'm going to be doing them virtually and oh, great. we're working on a special kind of a, a, a system that we can do it by Zoom. But what's different is that we're going to set up a, um, a printer on like in an event where the people that have me there, uh, it'll be by Zoom, but there'll be a printer and a camera so that not only will my signature that I actually sign their name, right. it comes out on the other end holding a Sharpie on an autograph photo. I mean, it's exactly as if I were there. Wow. And of course, it, you know, it's not quite the same, not, you know, not being in person, but right. what is a big benefit that was never there before is that instead of just having an autograph as a photo, now they'll go away each person with a photograph and a video of us talking and, and, and everything like that. And I think that's great. And th by doing this, these virtual appearances, it allows me to go to countries that uh, I never would have gone to. I mean, I've had a standing offer for years to go to Brazil and offers to go to Australia and, and, and you know, the UK. Right. And uh, it just, you know, I just wasn't going to take all the time to do that. Uh, but now I can do it, you right. know, and, and I can do it, you know, pretty well, considering it's still technology. <laughs> right, right. Now, Robin, uh, for the Batman TV show, was that your first acting gig? Yes, it was the first thing I ever tried out for. Now, I had been studying acting for years, and I both right. at UCLA as a student and also professionally. So it wasn't like I was just a total beginner. No, right. I, I just hadn't done any professional work. I'd done lots of plays and things like that within the training. Uh, and I really was very well prepared for it. Uh, I must tell you, there were 1,100 young actors that were interviewed for the part of Robin, 1,100. And it went over a period, I think, of 15 months that they were interviewing people oh, wow. for the role. And um, I, uh, I, I was uh, actually by helping my father with real estate. My father was a prominent real estate broker in Beverly Hills. Uh, and I got my license at 18, which is the youngest you can get it. Right. Not even having to study because my father was 
you know, I, I would hear it all day and every night. You know? uh, so, uh, but, but I was helping him and um, I, I was sitting on a house, which is what they call, you know, physically sit on it, right. but you sit in it and people come by to look at it. It was a producer that came by, a famous producer. He ended up buying the house and I had asked him, would he be willing to watch me do a, um, an, you know, a, a short scene? And he said, sure. And I, I did this scene. He said, you know, I think you're very talented. Uh, I'd like to send you to an agent. I said, great. So he sent me to an agent. And that was quite an experience because the first thing the agent said to me was, I can't get work for the actors I've got. I would never take anybody new. The only reason I'll take you is because this producer's asked me to, and I have to do it. You know, don't expect to work for a year. And if you do, you might get one line or one, you know, one right. word. Wow. Well, so uh, you sure you know, showed like, him. Oh, yeah. So, well, what, but what happened was I, I said, okay, okay. So it was about two weeks later that someone in his office called and said, there's something going on over at 20th Century Fox. Uh, we've got an appointment for you tomorrow. I said, oh, great. Well, what's, what's it about? Which, sorry, don't know anything about it. We're just interviewing young guys. So go over there, you know? So I had no idea what it was for. And wow. I went over the next day. And uh, sure enough, they had my name, parking, you know, pass and everything. And I went to a bungalow and I was introduced to the casting director. <clears throat> and he just asked me a couple questions and then said, would you like to meet the executive producer? I said, sure. I mean, you have to understand, because I had never even been on an interview. Right. I certainly didn't know what the protocol was. I figured, well, maybe everybody gets to meet the executive producer. That's not true, but I didn't know it. Right. So he sent me to another bungalow on the 20th Century Fox. And I went there and I went in and, you know, again, a lot of actors have been so emotionally uh, destroyed <laughs> by the time they get a role, they've been turned down so many times. And, you know, you know if, if, if you're selling shoes and somebody doesn't like the shoes, that's one thing. But when your product is yourself and somebody's, oh, no, you're not right for it. Oh, that's terrible. You know, it, it hurts, you know, because it's very personal. Absolutely. Um, but because I hadn't had that experience, I went in, you know, I was uh, undeterred and I walked in, I said, hello, sir. And I shook his hand. He's like, oh, my, you know, <laughs> what actor would ever do that? So, you know, so much <laughs> nerve, but I still was very respectful. Right. And he kind of looked at me, he says, well, he says, you're kind of big for the part. I said, oh, but sir, I promise you, I won't grow anymore. And <clears throat> he laughed like, how could you stop that? Right. Right. And he asked me one or two more questions. And I think one of them was, I guess you've been playing parts between 15 and 17. Uh, oh, yes, 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 I have. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, and, well, I, I did in the roles that in the in the classes, but not, right. you know, for, for, you know, and he may have taken it. I don't know how he took it. But so he said, would you like to do a screen test? I said, sure. I mean, after all, didn't everybody get to do a screen test? Right. No. Everyone. But I didn't know that. Right. I mean, it's very expensive. It costs the studio money, you know, to, to have a whole crew of people there and light everything and makeup and hair and all that stuff. <clears throat> so um, it was set up for me to do a, a screen test. Had no idea what it was. Nobody told me. Just, you know, show up on this day. And when I got there, the first thing they said is, well, we understand you're athletic and we'd like to see some stuff. Well, I, I had been studying karate uh, for a few years and I was actually a brown belt oh. and at the time, and, uh, I did some, well, actually more judo type stuff, falls and throws and stuff like that. But I also broke a board with my hand, which, you know, you have to understand this is 1965 karate only came to the United States in 1959. I mean, right. it was like the average person you say karate, well, what does that mean? You know? <clears throat> and, uh, so, um, I mean, and people seeing a board broken with your hand, I mean, like nobody had ever seen that at least right. at the studio level. So I did that. And uh, then they said, OK, well, now we want you to, you know, put on some civilian clothes. We have some, you know, you we have some clothes for you. So they just put stuff on and our regular stuff. And they said, we got to have you read with another actor. And the other actor was Adam West. And they introduced me about 15 minutes before and they had given me a single sheet of paper. That's all, single sheet of paper. And it had paragraphs on it. And the above each paragraph was a name, Dick Bruce, Dick Bruce, not 
Dick Grayson, Bruce right. Wayne, just Dick Bruce. And there was no description of anything other than just this. That's all. Right. So I sat down to and I started to talk to Adam West within five minutes. The two of us got along so well. We were laughing. We just we got along just an amazing friendship. We, we instantaneous kind of thing, you know, which is, is rare, you know, I mean, and because he had a very funny sense of humor and I have a very funny sense of humor, and we just connected. So we did the screen test and again, you know, nothing special. I said, well, thank you very much. And they said, wait, wait, wait a minute. We're not done with you yet. I said, oh, <laughs> well, okay. Well, what else? We want you to go over on the other side of that sound stage. And there is a dressing room with two wardrobe men who are going to help you get dressed. And I stopped for a minute. I said, well, <clears throat> no disrespect or anything, but I'm perfectly capable of dressing myself. Right. He said, oh, no, 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 no. You, you don't understand. You just go over there on the other side of that sound stage. You'll see that dressing room. It's got a light on in the inside. You go in there. They're going to help you get dressed. So I walked all the way. I'm telling you, the sound stage is like walking three blocks on a city right. street. Walk all the way over there. And sure enough, I found the trailer. I went in and there two guys are there. And I, I saw like a big, it was like a bed, but it w wasn't really a bed. It was like a couch without a back, but just like eight or nine feet long is huge and there was all this stuff on it and i said am i going to put some of this on they said no you're going to put all of it on i said what <clears throat> well they did help me get dressed i'm telling you nothing in my entire life was more uncomfortable i was so miserable in that thing you have no idea everything irritated or hurt or pinched or pulled everything <laughs> the, the the black mask irritated the ends of my eyelashes you know and if something touches your eyelashes it bothers right, you right right plus right. i could only see straight forward i couldn't see down i, I had no peripheral vision and in fact i almost broke my neck coming out of the trailer because i couldn't see down and missed the step uh and then the the vest was like wool and and they gave me a t-shirt but the wool was poking right through the t-shirt and irritating my and i'm kind of like scratching and like trying to get comfortable and they had a cape, double thick bridal satin. I mean, it must have been six or seven pounds, the cape. And it was pulling my head back, you right. know, and I'm kind of leaning forward to compensate. Tights that pull the hair on my legs, boots that were too tight on my feet. I'm telling you, I was miserable. And, but, you know, I've always been the kind of person that tries to see the positive in things, you know? Right. I mean, you know, that... There, there, you know, there must be some heaven in this disaster area, right? Right. So I said to the two wardrobe guys afterwards, I said to them, I said, uh, well, the good news here, this is as I'm going out the door right. to you know, back to the set. The good news is that after another 15 or 20 minutes, I'll never have to wear this costume again. Famous last words, right? Famous last words. So I get to the set. There's Adam in this costume. I honestly, I never read, a, I never heard of Batman and Robin. I, where I lived, they only had Superman comic books and there were, you know, Superboy. Right. I never heard of Batman and Robin. So I didn't know if this was some kind of Shakespearean thing or what. I had no idea what it was, but I did the dialogue and dialogue and everything. And uh, there was another young actor there and, a, and another young, well, also a, a grown man actor, uh, Lyle Wagner right. from that show. And he was testing as Batman and this other young man was testing as Robin. And, you know, I saw their tests and I, and I said, you know, this, and there's no ego here, but I said, there's a hundred young guys at UCLA where I'm going to the university that right. could do just as good as me. But the one that I'm competing with is not doing that good, you know? Right. <laughs> And uh, so, but you never know. So I left and it was about six weeks before I heard anything. Other oh, wow. than I got it once a week or twice a week, I'd get a phone call from the studio. Oh, uh, Bert. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is your shoe size? Uh, what's seven and a half, I think. Okay. And then another time the next week. Oh, what's your hat size? Well, I, I don't know. I've never worn a hat. Well, go get your head measured. <laughs> well, where, where do I go to get my head measured? You know, I mean, right. All these things. Right. And what it was, was that, um, I, and I didn't know why they were calling me. And then I got a call from this agent that the one that told me I wouldn't get any work for a year and all that stuff. Right. And he said, Oh, 
I uh, want you to come in and sign some contracts. I said, wow, that's wonderful. I'm going to, you know, now I'm going to be formally represented. I'm, you know, I'm going to say that I have a, a contract with a Hollywood agent representing right. me. So I went there, parked, it was in Century City, went up and sat down and uh, looked at the contracts. And it was like, I mean, it's like an inch and a half thick. Right. You know, and I said, gee, that's for an agency. That seems kind of strange. And then when I looked at the contract, it said 20th Century Fox. I said, well, wait a minute. I'm, I'm obviously signing the wrong thing. I, I'm here to sign the agency contracts. I said, no, 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 no. This is the studio contracts. I said, you mean I got the part? Yes. You mean you didn't know? No, I didn't know. You mean the studio didn't tell you? No, nobody told me. And later, a couple of days later, when I went to the studio, they said, you mean the agent didn't tell you? And so of the six weeks that I was rotting, waiting right. to find out if I had got it, four of those weeks, I'd already had it. But I didn't know. But nobody told <laughs> Nobody told me. And in fact, when I, when I met the executive producer again, his name was William Dozier, very prominent, big, formerly with uh, Hallmark Hall of Fame, vice president of CBS and all this stuff. Very nice to me. And he said to me, when I saw him again, he said, would you like to know why? we selected you to play Robin. I said, yes, sir. And I, I've always been brought up to be very respectful. Right. I said, yes, sir, I'd, I'd like to know. He said, the reason we selected you is because in our minds, forgetting television, forget it. Forget a television show, forget networks. If there really, for real, was a Robin, we think you personally, Bert, would be it. And we don't oh, want God. you to quote act. We just want you to, be yourself and be enthusiastic. And that's what I did for 120 episodes. That's, that's amazing. That's, uh, that's amazing. Oh. You got, you got to be you. So the, the holy, the, you know, holy blank Batman, you know, those, was that you or like how did that, you know, that obviously became a famous line. Well, that was me saying it, but it wasn't, um, I didn't write it at right. least not okay. in the beginning. And, when the show became such a monstrous hit after opening night, 55 share, meaning that of all the televisions that were turned on in North America, not right. just the United States, we're talking Mexico, Canada, and the United States. According to the Nielsen's, 55% of all people that were watching television on that night were watching Batman and all the other national stations, regional stations, local stations, right. uh, whatever stations, all of those from all over Mexico, United States and, and Canada were right. sharing the other 45%. It, 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 it would be equivalent of bigger than any Super Bowl in terms of watched audience. That's, that's, um, that's incredible. So yeah, at what point it was did the you beginning realize of a, you know, where it became number one and number two in the entire world? Right. In the world. Right. So at what point did you finally realize that it was a superhero uh, show and not uh, some Shakespearean costume? And when I got to this, when I got there and they explained that Batman and Robin was a comic book <laughs> that was put out <laughs> by DC Comics, you know, right. and, and I said, well, I, I didn't know, you know, I mean, it didn't really matter. Right. But the thing was, is that, and, and there was no instantaneous being famous or anything, Again, you have to understand, I'm 21 years old. I was 20 when I got the part and I had to go to court to be approved. But when we really started working, I was just turning 21. And um, the closest person in age to me on the set was Adam, who was 37 when I was 20. Wow. Was 17 years older than me. And all the crew, I mean, the studio has the best of the best, you know, right. cameramen, lighting people. These guys were all in their 50s and 60s. So here I am, 20 years old, and I don't really have anybody to relate to. Just imagine that you're on this giant cold soundstage, um, like 12 to 14 hours a day, Monday through Friday. Right. Um, it's usually very quiet. I mean, you, you know, because it's just, that's a soundstage, unless there's something going on. I mean, you might hear some dragging some cables or, you know, moving the lights or whatever. And, and, but what happened, you know, again, it wasn't the glamour that you might think it is, because basically it would take the crew 45 minutes to light a scene. And then I would work for 30 seconds. 
right. 30 seconds. And, and then, and, and, and that included second takes or third takes. I mean, it's just <laughs> like, you know, uh, and everything was done in pieces. Right. And I, I didn't, you know, and until I saw the first show, which I went home, I remember it was going to be January 12th, 1966, seven o'clock ABC. Um, I, I watched the show and I was like, wow, this is really good. I mean, <laughs> I heard the Batman theme music for the first time. Right. I saw when I love doing the fight scenes, but I never saw the pows and zaps. And right. I mean, for somebody who had, who had only just basically done their little thing, you know? And uh, I mean, and I did get to meet obviously the villains, but only those scenes where there was an interplay. Basically you have the good guys, Batman right. and Robin. Then you have the, the villains, you know, whoever it might be, the Riddler, the Joker, the Penguin, Catwoman, and they're with their hinge people. And only at certain times did they conflict with each other, you know, or, or fight. Right. And the fight scenes I love, because I love the fight scenes. Um, so I didn't really get to, and, and everything on the set, people said, well, you know, if you have that much time on your hands, you could read a book. You could, you could just, just think of all the books you could read while you're there. Right. I said, yeah, but it doesn't work out that way. It's like, you know, they say, okay, we're going to light the next scene. It's a move to the other side of the room and all of this. So, you know, you take off the mask and this and that, and you go sit in a chair. And if, if you have a book, right, you start to read and say, oh, Bert, we need you to make up for touch up. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, and the, the famous word on a on any kind of a television or movie set the famous saying is hurry up and wait yep i mean you got to go right now bird we need you in wardrobe we need you in makeup we got to do this we got to touch this up oh we're going to go to lunch and then you got to be back 10 minutes early and blah, 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 blah. you know and then you sit and you sit and you sit and then you start to pick up that book again oh bert we need you now you know <laughs> i i'm telling you i could luck lucky if i could read a single page <laughs> In a day, you right. never have it. Never, and then you're in. I'm in the dressing room. They have little dressing rooms, and they're nice. You know, it's just a just like a little tiny trailer. You know, it's got enough room for a little couch and a right. chair and a little table, and you put things on. So, but th they would knock on the door and open it. It wasn't like it wasn't like you know, knock on the door and I say, "Who's there?" Right. Uh, you know, give me a moment. I'm pulling my pants up. It's like you know. Oh, hello, Bert. Well, whoa. And I said, wait a minute here. Or, or they open the door. Oh, I've got the press here. They want to talk to you. So, well, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sitting here. Um, haven't pulled up my leotards yet. Why don't you give me a minute? You know, but it, that's the kind of no peace, no right. quiet. And yet you're sitting around forever and ever and ever. Now you mentioned stunts. And uh, I mean, there was a, you had a, a ton of stunts on the show. And unlike some of the other characters, you couldn't really hide. I mean, you know, you had your mask, but to change you would be a little bit. They, they, hard yeah, to do. I, I had a stunt man, a wonderful stunt man. His name was Victor Paul. I mean, tremendous stunt man. But the problem is, he didn't look like me. Okay, he looked like Cyrano de Bergerac with a gigantic nose, and and with you know, all I had is a little mask. So there was a policy on Batman. Whenever there was a stunt or anything really dangerous, always use Bert. That was the <laughs> policy. That was the policy. And it started on the first day of filming. On the first shot, I'm filming this TV series. We're up in Bronson Canyon in the Hollywood Hills. And there is a cave there that became the Bat Cave with a famous shot of the Batmobile roaring out of this cave making that sharp left turn and the sign goes down and then comes back up, you know, and, and that first shot, I mean, it was the first thing I did. And right. the first time I ended up going to the hospital. Okay. <laughs> and in a nutshell, uh, uh, they said, Bert, we got, you know, I was there early 6.00 AM and makeup right. wardrobe and it's hot out. I'm telling you it, it's, it's, it's not a lot of fun. Okay. So right. he said, Bert, we need you to go inside the cave. There's, we got the Batmobile in there and you are going to be driving out. I mean, you're going to, you know, Batman's going to drive out and you're right. going to be riding in it and you're going to be coming past the camera and going off towards Gotham city. I said, okay. So I went in there and of course in a dark cave, 
you can't see very well. So it took me several minutes before my eyes started to adjust where I could even make out where the door was. I got in, I kind of looked over there and it looked like Adam. I said, Adam, he says, no, my name's Hubie. I said, oh, well, you're, you're dressed like Adam. Why is that? He says, because I'm a stuntman. I said, oh, really? Well, that's great. Well, why are you doing, why are you, you know, doing this shot instead of Adam? He says, because it's a very dangerous shot and the studio wants to make sure that Adam West doesn't get hurt. I said, well, that's really nice of them. And I'm starting to think there for a minute. I said, really? Well, what's so dangerous about it? Well, we've got to come out at 55 miles an hour. We've got to go straight for the camera. At a precisely the right moment, I have to make a sharp left turn. I have to skid the back of the Batmobile around and race off towards Gotham City. I said, oh, okay, and that's dangerous? He said, oh, absolutely. And I said, you know, well, I mean, can you get hurt? He said, oh, absolutely. He says, in fact, the more broken bones I get, the more money I get. I said, well, that's, that's nice to hear. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying, well, well wait a minute. Do I have a stuntman? Oh, yeah, you do. Oh, well, that's good. Well, well, where is he? Oh, last time I saw him, he was having coffee with Adam West. I said, well, well wait a minute. If this is dangerous, maybe he should be here and I should be there. Right. Well, I don't know. But anyway, we get ready here. And he starts gunning the engine. I said, and then I hear him say, lock it up. Get ready to roll. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. There's a terrible mistake here. <laughs> they come running. Bert, what's the problem? Well, this is a stuntman. He said, we know that. Yeah, but he's telling me this is a very dangerous stunt. He said, we know that. I said, yeah, but, but, but he told me that I have a stuntman that's having coffee with Adam West. He says, what's that got to do with you? Well, the, why is it he here instead of me if it's so dangerous? Oh, well, we can't use him. Oh, okay. Well, why can't you use him? Well, he doesn't look like you. Well, you mean you hired somebody to be my stuntman that you can't use because he doesn't look like me? He says, that's it. Oh, well, well, then why do you have a stuntman? Well, we have to have it. Union this, and we have to have it, all of this stuff. And he says, but we'll use him on the fight scenes where it's long distance away and nobody will know that it's not you. I said, okay. I said, well, he's this. Well, he says, we got to come out at 55 miles an hour. He says, yeah, yeah, we got to go, Bert. Yeah. So what's the problem? I said, well, I don't have a seatbelt. No, well, Batmobile doesn't have seatbelts. <laughs> I see. Uh, I noticed there's no door handle on the inside. No, nope, doesn't have it because all of the camera equipment has to be in here. I said, well, what do I hold on to? I don't know. He says, I don't know. And I'm looking around. There's nothing to hold on to except there's this one eighth of an inch flexible plexiglass that you could go like this with. And I'm going to hold on to that coming out at 55 miles an hour. Anyway, that's it. Shoot it. Boom. We came out 55 miles an hour. Stuntman was phenomenal. But I'm telling you, you 55 miles an hour on dirt. You know what I mean? Racing towards a camera. You're racing right there. There's no like slowing down. Racing and I mean, it was perfect timing. He did it and the back end swinged around. But the problem was, unexpectedly, my door flew open. That was not supposed to happen. When it flew open, it knocked the cameraman off the little camera truck. I mean, that's how close we were. Right. Knocked him right off the camera truck. Knocked an arc lamp. These incredibly heavy, giant things like you, like a searchlight up on stilts or a tripod. It's gigantic. It hit somebody, would have killed him. That fell down. I was thrown towards the door and, you know, just the reaction of, 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 of trying to protect yourself. I threw my left arm behind me and miraculously I wrapped my little finger around the gear shift knob and it kept me from falling out, but it pulled my finger out of joint, oh. which was incredibly painful, painful. And, and, and now all of a sudden there's dust everywhere. And I mean, this is a real accident. And they run up to me and Bert, are you okay? I said, yes, but my hand is hurting me. And even through my green glove, my finger was twice the size, twice the size. And I, and they said, we got to get you to hospital because obviously, obviously your fingers out of joint. I said, okay. Right. Uh, I got out of Batmobile and I said, well, where's the car going to take me? Oh, we can't take you now. <laughs> you, you can't take me now. No, we didn't get the shot. I said, oh, well, you mean, I, I don't, I, I, I'm in a lot of pain. I said, sorry, we got to get the shot. It costs us like $35,000 every 10 minutes to film this. 
you know, this would, it's, it would cost a couple of hundred thousand dollars right. for you oh to go to the gosh. hospital. We got to wait till we get the shot. That was at 730 in the morning. <laughs> and at noon, I left for the hospital. At oh, noon, my God. After having done the shot three more times. Hey, well, welcome that, to that's just the first right? of four days in a row that every single day I went to the emergency hospital, <laughs> second degree burns, two by four landed on my nose, broke my nose. I mean, you know, and, and I kept seeing the same doctor who kept saying, you know, maybe you're not cut out for this. I mean, you know, you know, maybe you should find something a little safer. You know, you might be an accident pro person. I said, I've never been in an emergency hospital in my life. I, I don't, I, I didn't do anything wrong. I just, bad things happen. So anyway, the studio was very smart. They took out a gigantic life insurance policy. On me. <laughs> and I honestly believe by the end of the third season, they were trying to collect on that policy. <laughs> Seems like it. Very dangerous stuff they had me do. So that's the story. I mean, that's just one of a million things that went on filming Batman. Uh, I want to talk about uh, a couple of things real quick before we, we talk about Gentle Giants, because I definitely want to talk about that. I have a dog and a cat myself, so I definitely want to talk about that. But uh, the first, uh, you mentioned it, you know, some of the Batman villains on there, you know, Burgess Meredith, uh, you know, Vincent Price, um, you know, uh, Cesar Romero, like, so you're saying you didn't get a chance to really talk with them uh, or, you know, off of the, the actual scene? Uh, I, you get a little bit, a little bit, because there are, there are, you know, you shoot something, the light wasn't right or the camera needs to be reloaded or right. there was a sound problem. I mean, you know, a million things can go wrong, right? So we would sit there and all have chairs kind of around right. outside of the set and you're not right in the lights because it's, and then those days, they only had hot lights. There weren't like today, there are cool lights and you can be very comfortable, but there weren't then. I mean, you really, you get in the light and you're going to sweat in about two minutes. Okay. So, so I would have a chance to talk to them, but you never could get in anything really in depth, you right, know, no substance. Uh, but you, but, but you, you know, and it was still a thrill. I was like a kid in a candy store. I mean, every one of these stars was someone that I had either seen in a movie going to the movie theater right. or seen on television and so every one of them and for me it was what a thrill to be working with these great people and they were so professional never made a mistake never missed their line i mean it was like they were like like a machine and when they did their work and yet you know tremendous actors and actresses but they didn't make mistakes right. and i thank goodness had a photographic memory so i was able to remember my lines very easily and there weren't very many at a time Whereas Adam, now he had a teleprompter and he would have problems. And even with a teleprompter, goof right. off the lines. And because I hardly, if ever, made a mistake on my lines, he would say to me, Bert, you're making me look bad. Make a few mistakes. <laughs> I said, Adam, I can't do that. That's not right. They don't, they don't want me to make mistakes, you know? So that was, but, you know, it was, a, it was still a wonderful experience. And every week, a different major star. And, and then because... <laughs> There were so many major stars that wanted to be on their show that could not be because there's only, you know, one villain a week. Right. Which the last third season became could be a double villain or whatever. So but they had everybody wanted to be on the show. So they created this walking up the side of the building thing with a window that right. we would walk up and here would be a celebrity that would have, you know, a short cameo. And the first one was Sammy Davis, Jr., and there was, you know, Jerry Lewis, Don Ho, Lurch, uh, you know, uh, the people from all over the movie and television industry. They were making these quick, you know, appearances on Batman and their family, their kids were driving them crazy to be on Batman. It was like, you have to understand, this was the hottest right. television show in the world. I mean, there were women that had Batman hairdos, their, their merchandise was like in back in 1966, they announced they'd sold $3.4 billion of Batman merchandise. Today has never been ex exceeded. Right. Even Star Wars, Superman, Lord of the Rings, you know, Harry Potter. Nobody has ever sold as much Batman as merchandise as Batman right. merchandise. Uh, that's incredible. I mean, that's just the, the numbers are incredible. And the fact that it's still 
on you know streaming services, the movies. It, it's amazing. Oh, uh, the now, Blu-ray, the DVDs. You know, yeah, I have the, I have them. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people do. You know, and uh, Warner Brothers did a fabulous job on those DVDs. I mean, absolutely. They went back and took the original thirty-five millimeter film, and they just cleaned it up and i mean it just is pristine the sound is magnificent i mean that's just a real studio job fixing that so it just is so perfect and clear and uh you know it uh, and for me it was a lot of fun doing that you know and i got to do a lot of things that other actors don't get to do you know i mean obviously a lot of you know fighting scenes and and, and climbing right. and stuff like that and the great thing was no director ever told me or Adam how to say our lines ever. Now they might say, well, this scene is inside the Batmobile or you're standing in front of the Bat computer or this or that. I mean, where you're located, nobody ever told me how to say a line. And Adam and I had this chemistry. And so that when he would say something in a certain way, I would react to it. And it was always like, it came out perfect. And they would say, you know, it's like, God, it's like magic that the two of you together. And even years later, we'd go on appearances and you put the two of us together and people like look and they go, oh, my God. And they would laugh. Well, I mean, we wouldn't say anything. We're like, why are people laughing at us? You know, they, it just that it, it just got people because yeah. our humor was so subtle and double meaning and and everything we did, we just violated everything we could do. And as a result, the censors were in qu- quite a bit complaining right. about our costumes or what we said or or you shouldn't have done that or this and that we said Gee, i didn't know sorry i didn't mean to do that i won't do that again can we turn around and do something else to get them upset that's fantastic uh I, that's that's great but uh, another thing i want to talk about uh and a lot of my fans uh, of the Milo Beasley show are professional wrestling fans and you uh-huh. have been involved in some professional wrestling shows how did how did that come about? Were, are you a fan of wrestling or did somebody just call you out of the blue? Well, a l- little bit of history. Um, before I got the part of Robin, I was on the wrestling team in my high school. OK, right. and and uh, I wrestled at one hundred and three pounds and I can imagine one hundred and three pounds. That's pretty light, you know, and five, seven and a half, hundred and three right. pounds of skin and bones. When I did Batman, I think I weighed 125 pounds. Uh, and, uh, but, but uh, the, the, yeah, it was, it was, it was really, the, the whole thing was a, a, an incredible experience. You know, it was just, it was just incredible. There's so many things I could tell you, but the re- on the wrestling situation, I was making an appearance at a wrestling thing. And um, the guy wanted to, he wanted, he was going to do a Batman kind of take off one of the wrestlers. Right. And, and what happened was he said, you know, would you like to come out and, you know, let me as, as Batman, the wrestler knight you for some kind, you know, kind of a thing. I said, okay, right. fine. What the heck. Right. So um, I, I went out there and, and I don't know what these wrestlers do. I mean, I hear sometimes it's stage. I, I don't know. Right. Uh, honestly, I'm just there making right. appearance, signing autographs. So this, this, this other wrestler starts to get in a fight with the guy that I'm supposed to do this thing and kind of bumps into me. And by that time, I'm black belt and cry. Right? <laughs> and he hit me and boom, boom. You know, I, and all of a sudden I hit him. He was down for real down. It's like, they're looking at me like, I, I'm not sure that I'm supposed to do that. Right. And, and, and now oh, the crowd is cheering and this and that. And, uh, but that was really the only time I did it. And, and it was kind of fun, actually. And I can see how these wrestling matches are very entertaining. I mean, there's no question about that. But the time when mine was, it wasn't actually anything that was fake. Right. He, he, he bumped me the wrong way. And, uh, and you know, it just it happened so quick. Yep. Yep. Hey, you know, uh, never say never. Maybe we can get you back out there into the ring sometime. <laughs> well, well I, t- I do have a piece of trivia story for you, though. OK, I think you might be interested to your viewers. Um, when I was filming Batman, I lived in a condominium complex that was uh, in West Los Angeles. 
And uh, there was a, another young martial artist that became quite popular on, on, and on, on another television show, ultimately became the most famous probably martial artist in the world on, on cinema. It was named as Bruce Lee. Right. And Bruce and I used to spar together. I mean, we were friends. Oh. And, uh, so, um, and I, at the time uh, he was married to Linda and Brandon was six months old. And I remember one time that we went down to Chinatown and we had dinner together. And because Bruce had lived in Hong Kong for 10 years, he knew all the most authentic stuff that wasn't even on the menu to order. And we had a great time, but we sparred. Okay. And uh, a piece of trivia for you is that Bruce Lee's first filmed fight scene of his career filmed on film right. was fighting me on Batman. That was the first one of his entire career. And uh, so, you know, and then of course he became by far the most right. famous martial artist of all time. And he trained, I mean, we were friends. I mean, he trained eight hours a day. Right. If it was Christmas day, he trained eight hours on Christmas day. He trained and trained and trained and trained. And he was very quick not just physically quick, but mentally quick, you know? And he would often, we'd often talk about stuff because, uh, you know, I was at that time a brown belt right. and, and, you know, and, 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 but he's very fast and you have to stay back because you can't see it sometimes. It's so fast, you know, uh, but it was great experience. And then I would see him after Batman, we, in certain tournaments, I would attend, you know, karate championships and stuff like that and he would be there doing demonstrations and stuff. and you know we'd, we'd see each other through the years but uh it was you know and, and you know that was uh his first film his fight scene was fighting me which is a piece of of trivia That's later so on in 2015 now it's like six years ago i was inducted into the international karate kickboxing hall of fame and which was a great honor it was in las vegas and a lot of black belts and stuff there right. and so it was a big honor and got a beautiful trophy. Um, so, you know, it, it was uh, martial arts were, were, were something that I, I enjoyed. Um, but I also was an actor and I also was a business person. And right. I kind of like, you know, if you're really going to be totally into one thing, then you really got to be totally into that. But I, I wanted to, to do different things, you know. How will the boy wonder get out of this? Find out next week. Same bat time, same bat channel.